recent data showing how EEOC is deploying its limited resources makes it very clear that with a growing number of defeats in the courtroom, with a growing number of charges to process, with a fixed budget and limited resources in terms of staff, they've got to be much more careful in the cases they select for prosecution, meaning that they are bringing directed charges from district offices, which are bottom-up charges that don't require charging parties, and cases signed by a commissioner also not requiring a charging party. The directed charge is only available to them under the ADA and the ADEA. The commissioner's charge is available to the EEOC with respect to any issue that may arise under the law they principally administer, Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Retaliation claims are the most vexing of all claims to defend, and that is because it is counterintuitive for a fact finder, a judge, a jury, an arbitrator, to believe that a company that believes it was falsely accused of discrimination, affecting its reputation, its budget, causing distraction and disruption, even affecting employee morale, nonetheless didn't retaliate against the individual who brought a claim they thought was meritless. And because the retaliation claim is independent of the merits of the underlying claim, it is quite common for employers to successfully defend the underlying claim of discrimination only to fail to defend successfully the claim of retaliation. We can see with further budgetary constraints, growing volume of cases being filed as charges with EEOC, that EEOC will look to get more bang for the buck by bringing claims against numerous individuals in the same organization or on behalf of numerous individuals against a common organization, systemic claims, directed charges, which are bottom-up, and commissioner's charges, which are top-down. In neither case do they even need a charging party. And they're also aware of the fact that employers are doing a better job directing their policies toward compliance with the statute EEOC administers and are far more successful than ever before in the courtroom, on some occasions even getting their attorney's fees back from the EEOC. I think it is clear that the EEOC is aware that they are going to have more than they can handle and have taken on more risk than they ever imagined by going up against employers who are willing to fight to defend themselves against claims they believe have no merit. And that means being much more selective, but not bringing fewer cases, just cases they are more confident they can prevail in and bring them on a broader scale against the same institutions.